Hi, my name is Ali Shersavar and in this video we're going to talk about how to stabilize a SEPIC converter without even knowing the transfer function. SEPIC converters transfer function is really quite complex so we have come up with a different way of very quickly calculating the poles and zeros and the component values. Here I've got a SEPIC converter, it's attached to my load and I am measuring the plant with the body 100. Now the first thing that you need to do if you're going to use this approach, i.e. trying to just measure the plant and manipulate the plant, is to make sure that it's relatively stable. It doesn't have to be a sophisticated uh, um, compensator, usually just a type 1, i.e. a very slow loop with just a capacitor will do it. You may have to experiment a little, but all you have to do is get it just reasonably stable so that you can measure the plant. And it's usually just one capacitor and the feedback path of the, uh, of the compensator. So uh, let's have a look at the loop. You can immediately see that uh, the crossover frequency is uh, too high and the phase margin is too low. And, but as I change the poles and zeros, uh, the WDS will automatically manipulate this line and allows me to meet the stability criteria. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to reduce the pole at origin because we know that the pole at origin determines the position of the crossover frequency. So if I reduce that, let's say to uh, 400, you can see immediately that we've gone down from 20 kilohertz to around two kilohertz. That is good, but the phase margin is still very, very, very low and the slope is very high. We know that for a stable power supply, we want a phase margin better than 45 degrees and a slope of around 20. So. I can now place my zero. Um, we know that a zero from my compensator is going to boost my phase. So if I place a zero very early on, this plot here will start to rise up and therefore I should get a better phase margin. So if I place a zero at let's say 500 hertz, you will see that suddenly I've got a phase margin of 95 degrees. WDS has calculated everything for you. In addition, it is plotting it so you can see in the plot. But my crossover frequency has jumped up now to one kilohertz. I will deal with that later, but I'd like to show you something else. At this point here, the um, gain is flattening out. So I have a zero around here. And what I can do is try and cancel that zero with a uh, pole of the compensator at around 10 kilohertz. You can again immediately see that this has cancelled out. Now I am crossing at 7 kilohertz. I've got 68 degrees of phase margin, 20 dBs of gain margin, and a slow path crossover frequency of around minus 23. And that is already a stable power supply. What I would like to do though as you can see here in this phase, the phase is falling. So if there are any uncertainties, if there's any changes in temperature and so on, my phase may change. But if you look at this region here, the phase is actually quite flat. So if I crossed around here, even if there are uncertainties and things change, my phase margin is not going to change very much over here. So I quite like to drop down my crossover frequency from 7 kilohertz to let's say around 2 to 3 kilohertz. So if I reduce my polar origin to let's say around 200, now you can see that I am, on, I am crossing at around 3.5 kilohertz. It is in this flat region of the phase, so any changes in temperature and so on is not going to impact the phase margin very much. I've got 75 degrees of phase margin, 26 dBs of uh, gain margin, and a beautiful slope of minus 20 dB at crossover. This power supply is stable. The final thing I look at is the component values. WDS has already calculated the component values that is going to be soldered across this compensator's uh, op-amp. Um, and uh, the design is complete. Obviously, we will solder these then next onto the board and remeasure to make sure that everything is meeting the criteria. However, we have managed to stabilize a SEPIC converter without even knowing the transfer function. We have managed to import the data based on a loop measurement. 
of the of the plant the plant measurement, and then we have just manipulated the poles and zeros to meet the stability criteria without even touching any of the complex equations. I hope you enjoyed the video, and we look forward to meeting you in one of our workshops. Thank you very much for watching.